All right, Zig coming in on the top ten on the show. We have Alan and Barb Vest of uh, Double V, both singer-songwriters based out of Oklahoma with a composer mind. Alan was in the band Starlight Mints before. I highly recommend you check him out. Double V has a new album out called Treat Her Strangely. Um, we're going to listen to the first track off the new record, When Dawn Comes Tonight. Double V, Treat Her Strangely. Double V, When Dawn Comes Tonight, the album's Treat Her Strangely, out now on all streaming platforms. Barb and Alan were a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm excited to share it with you. But before we do, if you can like, rate, review, or subscribe to the podcast on any of the podcast platforms, it helps me keep talking to cool guests and sharing their insight with you. Um, With that being said... Before we get into it, this was done over Zoom, so there's some times where it gets a little choppy or uh, some timing issues, which, you know, change the rhythmic structure of the conversation. And uh, right now, you can hear my voice is a little fried, and it was the same within this interview. Um, so I did a pretty good job editing those timing structures out, but uh, but yeah, it's just something to know. If there's a cadence that sounds weird, that's why. Um, anywho, here's my conversation with Barb and Alan. Awesome, awesome. Well, one thing I wanted to start off with was, um, so Matador Bell was on the first record for uh, um, Starlight Mints. What brought it yeah. back for, uh, for uh, Double V? I, I think, well, I mean, it's a different version, first of all. Yeah, very um, much. Um, it's, I kinda, I, we kind of felt like it was a, like the, on the Mints record, it was like a demo. You know, because it really was, I mean, the sense of I had done it on the four track and then um, we went to the studio as a band and just kind of knocked it out, you know, and and I never really thought about like, well, it's just this short little piece, short and sweet and nice, whatever. But uh, and then we just got to thinking, why don't we just why don't we try to add a a chorus and a pre-chorus and it just sort of kind of blossomed from there. Really, Barb's idea. It's cool. Like, yeah. So, well, it's interesting. So kind of, Sorry, keep because it's kind of a pop song already. You know, it's got this kind of pop sort of sensibility to it, and and then uh, we just kind of took it a little a little further. Cool. It's a, it's interesting. Double V compared to Mints is like there's like this. I, I I don't know if it's a taste or if it's a fine development of like production because like. The mints have kind of like a more punky edge in certain situations than Dumble V. Yeah. But like, um, so kind of diving in, let's kind of jump into uh, to where music became your mode of expression. So um, let's start with you, Alan. When it came my mode yeah. of expression? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I mean, really just, I mean, in my, you know, like whenever I was like 20, yeah. You know, I mean, I, mean I, I I didn't like grow up thinking I was going to be like a musician or ever, you know, do anything professional or, you know, I just it, I got the bug, you know, and uh, it was more or less just, you know, getting recording equipment, even like even a simple tape machine to record yourself. I, I never sang in high school. I never was thought I would be a singer. It was just sort of this. And I was in a, I was in bands before I sang, and then I just I started recording myself and saying, "Well, I can do this, maybe." You know, it was very like late bloomer. Uh, uh, so it, just, it sort of just sort of took off from there and got a four track and uh, continue on. Got an eight track, you know, sort of built up built up things. And I, I guess I'm kind of an, a, an arranger, you know, at heart. You know, yeah. So vocals are sort of secondary to that as well. Well, and vocals are vocals are hard because I I came from yeah. the, the yeah. guitar background and it's kind of like, okay, I'm doing this thing and every time I push that thing and do this thing, that sounds like that usually unless there's yeah. some yeah. disconnect. But with vocals, it's a feel thing and it's a completely the yeah. recording yourself is so prominent to even understand what you're doing. You know, even if you're saying yeah. something, it feels great. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like it could sound awful. You're, like, You're singing yeah, on the or whatever, but yeah. But I mean, that's where I that's where great ideas come from. Sometimes it's like you, yeah. you know, you have a guitar, and you start humming something, you start babbling something. Doesn't matter what you say, um, you can c- go back l- later and edit it and kind of find words or whatever. You know, 
Yeah. I think back when I started writing songs, I would just I would literally write words down that I liked, you know, and just it was like scrambled, you know, words mm. and then find, you know, I'd, I'd write so like multiple songs with the same words in them and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, that's how I started. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. No, that's cool. Because... Rhyming dictionaries and stuff like that. Yeah. We use rhyming dictionaries still, actually. Yeah. So I got one but, lane right but, here. I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Was it because um, that's always fascinating to me is because it seems like such a hard, a, a hard thing to get into, right? There's all this mystique around like, um, yeah. creating and like it definitely with the songwriter aspect. Like there's books on books and there's methods and this, everyone has their own thing, but it kind of, it kind of is all around that capturing a moment or or trying to make a moment. Oh yeah, into something. for sure, for sure. I mean, there's like songs that have taken, like our songs like uh off of our ep one of our songs took us so long to like finish it we had the music we had the vibe but vocally it just took so long and there's songs like i remember from the very very past like the very first starlight mint song submarine number three i wrote it in like two minutes you know <laughs> it was just like you know there's it's just it's so weird how how it works our last song that we worked on on this a uh, newest double v album uh treat uh treated strangely uh questions closed we wrote that pretty quickly and for us it was like a miracle it was kind of like we just it was a fantastic little voyage well barb let's uh, when did music become your mode of expression pre-birth really yeah. I mean, i've been <laughs> grew up in a musical family so i've been hearing music since you know i don't know when but um my mother's mother my grandmother was a composer and playwright and Whoa, would cool. write, write songs and record herself on a little tape player on her piano and you know send us cassette tapes and um, my mother also plays and sings and my sister and nieces so I mean just as children we would gather around the piano and sing musicals and that kind of thing and uh, played piano started taking lessons when I was probably six years old or so so yeah it's always kind of been Part of my fabric but as far as songwriting and all of that that really didn't begin till with alan i mean i wrote you know little ditties but nothing you know but your your poems and stuff like that right i was more of a and, yeah, yeah fiction and writing and that kind of thing so well it's, it's yeah, we complement each other really well that well definitely um but like with it's interesting like coming from that kind of background of like with it being so involved and like, like this, so your grandmother was a, she was a playwright and would write mm -hmm. music, which they, was it two and separate things or did she like write like musical-esque scores and, and, and both she wrote, yeah. yeah, she wrote a whole like musical essentially of Judge Roy Bean. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so, it's so hard. Sorry. It's so hard. You're like, because it, we, we, we just started doing the microphone thing, by the way. Zoom, I appreciate you we, doing that. Like, yeah. This is, I, li I got off the, I just did an interview with a metal band from India and uh, they, they had some great oh, cool. stuff to say, but there was just like, it was all phones. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be a lot of editing on my end to try to make it clear. Um, we just, we just <laughs> so had this, we, we just made this uh, a couple of days ago. We, I don't know why we did, hadn't thought of it before, but we just put a couple of mics and had this focus right. Uh, uh, Thing and, and a mixer and stuff so we just i mean we have our studio behind right, us you know right. but, so. but, we, but, but i don't have a like i don't have a camera on my on my mac pro yeah so we're using this laptop here so that's all good. Anyway, anyway blah blah blah, blah, blah. i appreciate it <laughs> i'll be inside <laughs> my pleasure we'll try to speak directly into the mic <laughs> yeah, yeah but her grandma yeah like she like we like when we, when we first met like we um we took a bunch of these old cassette tapes that her grandma had you know, because her grandma would put a cassette recorder on top of the piano, right? Piano bench. Piano bench. And like, you know, just record and record and record and have all these great, wonderful songs. And uh, one of the first things we did was we, we took it all to digital and then Very we started cool. adding things on top of it, you know, yeah. just like. Well, we took one song in, oh, particular, one song in particular and particular, yeah. orchestrated it out and had me do backing harmonies with my grandmother who passed away in her early mid fifties from a heart attack in the eighties mm. or nineties or something like, yeah. Um, um, but it was a surprise. It was a gift for my mother. We aww. just you know, brought it over, put headphones on her and said, Hey, listen to this. You know, that's cool. she realizes this is one of her mother's old songs with her daughter 
harmonizing and singing along and Alan yeah we added like guitar some guitar and bass and guitar and cello and stuff wish she could have heard it herself yeah that's so cool um well so that was that like your your guys's kind of first music endeavor together? kinda yeah probably that kinda, yeah. yeah yeah and then we did a little christmas yeah we holiday done, cover yeah. song yeah we've done we did we did a lot uh, of things then, before we actually kind of committed to the to the band yeah we actually uh the hit single slumber party <laughs> with our nieces they were like eight and 11 like or eight something. And 10. that's yeah. awesome i, I bet they yeah had... it's, <laughs> it's so great cool. yeah <laughs> It's 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 interesting because like with something like that where it's endearing and it's kind of not about like it's not about how well it turns out like well, at least with the, yeah. the, the the song with the nieces like um, it's more about having fun and showing how fun that process is to the younger generation totally. you know totally mm -hmm. um, yeah that it lowers the bar like so when doing that you can kind of see these strengths someone possesses or or, or just put, uh, with their character within doing a thing. Like, I see that a lot with, like, teaching and watching certain people teach different subjects. Like, oh, um, how how they ask questions in science is really engaging. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's a weird example, mm -hmm. but, like, b there is no bar to, like, it has to be this answer. It has to be this thing. So doing, going through pro little projects like that were some of the kind of, like, things that made it clear that, oh, we can probably actually do something serious together with this. Well, I mean, I I think we already had like a lot of production, you know, like I mean, like with the men's stuff, it was always kind of like it was always kind of like me doing all the production, you know. So okay. I got I got you know we had a studio already. I mean, it came you know I I uh when I moved in with Barb, um, we made a studio room, you know, yeah. off the bat, and uh, so we we were kind of already there, um, because I I kind of have had a studio room for you know 18 years you know, <laughs> kind of thing yeah, so i just sure. you know so we already had it you know the, the production you know place to do things here and uh yeah so like does that answer any question sorry oh, yeah no for sure because it's, yeah. <laughs> it's like you're living quarters you live in it you know yeah. what i mean it's like it's the mm -hmm. studio room and probably the bedroom at one point and <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it was yeah it was a guest that's what we're in right, right now right now yeah <laughs> 12 and a half years ago <laughs> yeah that's awesome well like with uh, like learning to like uh do song production and audio production you worked with a uh, Dave Sardi. Yeah, Dave Sardi. Yeah. Like, I mean, that was like my first Pro Tools experience. Okay. Um, so like I had it was all tape machines before that, cassette tape, you know. Um and I went to New York. Uh and well Dave Sardi actually, I mean, we the band kind of broke up, so I like Mets, because we Oh okay, were, that's post. Got it. Our manager was trying to get us signed to like major labels and it just it wasn't working out. You know, it was just, and, and it, a lot of, we had a lot of members at one time. We had like a seven piece band with a, like, you know, a cello player, a violin player. And so it was pretty chaotic. Um, and then Dave, I met Dave, we played a show in New York uh, at a place called Brownies, which no longer exists, but it was kind of a, kind of a big deal at the time. Um, uh, and Atlantic Records had, you know, we had a supposedly uh, yeah, we were playing for the president of Atlantic Records, and I don't think it worked out very well. But Dave Sardi happened to be there, and he, uh, we, me, him, and I stayed in contact, and we, he, uh, he put out a label, and then was like, "Hey, you want to be on the label?" Uh, and kind of convinced me to just take all the demos that we had made on two inch tape to New York and uh, making a record. So that's how it all started. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sick. Okay. So like, okay. So cause like going from like tape, like I, when yeah. I first started like tracking stuff, I had a little four track, you know, it's yeah. such a, like, it's, it's very like, I move this, I push that button. Somehow that triggers that thing to work. Like it's very tactile and like going into the digital yeah. sphere of stuff is like, there's so many more options and so much more stuff you can do. It's like, it's a huge learning curve. So yeah, I've lived through both those things, you know, like, <laughs> like intensively, you know, yeah. it's like, 
because I would go from, you know, four track or eight track cassette um, to the studio, which was 24 track tape, two inch tape, you know? Yeah. And then, then, you know, computers happened, you know, and it was really kind of immediate. It was like a you know year 2002 or 2000, you know, uh, I got a, I got a Mac like G4 or something huh. was my first computer, I think. Yeah. And, uh, everything changed, you know, it was yeah. just like, wow, everything I could just, you know, multi-track and we had, I had the program called reason, which okay. you know, it was like a simple yeah. program. And uh, I still have work. We still use reason a little bit here and there. Barb uses it for her, like your keyboard live stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, it, yeah, I love when people say they use logic and reason. I'm like, that's a great two things to use. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, okay. Very, so like to kind of like backtrack in, in, I guess in the, so even just seeing things as being like kind of orchestrated in a certain way, when you started the, uh, the mints, like being a seven piece band, there's a lot of moving parts or getting to a seven piece band that, you know, that like it's hard enough to get yeah. two people to agree to, to a time yeah, and place yeah. to meet. You know what I mean? Like I have a band yeah. that's three people and I, I get it. And there's, that's more than, yeah. enough. but like, um, so like when, when like kind of diving into like the self exploration with recording and like seeing that like you can orchestrate and kind of build off things, it's kind of what it sounds like. Like even just with singing, like you kind of hear like, oh, there's a, a nugget there. If I keep working on it, I can, I can actually hit yeah. that note, you know? Yeah. Um, so when you got to the band, like, well, like at least Starlight, like, how did like that skill kind of flourish in a live setting? Would it become more clear that orchestration was? Well, yeah. I mean, I I would write the shell. I mean, I'm I'm a cello player as well. Um, okay, is that your main? And be, I started off like actually in viola, so I have a little background on on when I was a kid. Okay. Um, and I didn't. I I I, I quit probably when I was like 14 or 15. Um, maybe 16 actually cello. Um, and then I didn't own a cello, and then I picked it back up once I started getting into songwriting. So anyway, I have a sort of a, back, a background with writing string parts with the, like that, but I was mm -hmm. wasn't very good, you know. Yeah. I never, I didn't practice all the time. I was just like, oh yeah, you know, uh, uh, it'll be like this. But then we had a cello player, uh, Mary Beth and James was our uh, violinist at the time. Um, they were they were you know really good at what they did, so they would be like perfecting you know what I was writing. So. Um, so anyway, it's, okay, so like <laughs> it's kind of like having the knack for it with that, and they can like expand upon it. Yeah, yeah, and and it's still that's what we do. We're doing today, as yeah. as opposed to like I don't really I actually played cello on this this record a little bit, um, but we have a lot of programs, you know, like these these uh, virtual instruments. Right, right. Um, we'll start the process on, and it, sometimes even use, you know, um, and then we'll. You know, hire people to play you know yeah we hired three musicians yeah for this album yeah that's so. that's that's super that's what's super rad about like patches and stuff and for the most part they sound really good you know you can you yeah can, they sound really good like we've got some really nice we've invested a lot of money into these plugins you and... know plug in yeah these vs you know these uh virtual instruments and stuff but it, it's nothing like the real thing you know for sure for sure there's definitely some you can get a you can't get away with, but like it's cool to kind of give you a sense of what you're expecting. Yeah, like some yeah, like we do drums, yeah. like we do drums, like where for this record we did drums to where we used to, uh, you know, some virtual drum machines like BFD and uh, addictive drums, um, like you know snare kicks, toms. And then, you know, initially hi hats and, and cymbals, but then we would replace like the hi hats and the cymbals with the real, you know, here in the studio. And then eventually, when we went to go mix them, we would replace them at at Wes's, which we, which where we mixed down at. Um, so it's it's a weird process. Uh, we didn't uh, we, we're not doing real drums. And I don't I don't remember the last time we really have done real real drums you know mm. the drums um, sound really except, good except for except for make you know sometimes 
trying to mix them together like real drums i mean which 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 using cymbals is make trying that but sometimes if you get drums in a good room and then you mix that with sample drums it can be a cool thing definitely yeah we, we haven't done that in a while it's uh, drums being the hardest thing that sonically kind of capture because there's so much that needs to be isolated and they're all put yeah. right next to each other <laughs> like yeah it, it, <laughs> yeah we and we don't have the i mean we we do most of the music in this room here which is a small room yeah it's dead we got we have bass traps everywhere so it's like very dead you know and then we'll just kind of bring it to life in in the studio uh at our mis mixing mixing mastering guy wes sharon 115 recording in norman oklahoma very nice We've worked with him on all three yeah releases Shout yeah. out, Wes. Can you tell yes. that Barb has a, a radio background by yeah. her voice? <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna I was gonna get into that, but um, yeah. so well, actually, well, yeah, because with filmscapes, right? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, so so your family was musical, right? And like you grew up, so it sounds like the appreciation for the arts has already been there. Where oh, yeah. where did and like if your grandmother was writing um, plays. And like, so did film come to you through this or was there a, another member of your family that influenced you to like film or was this the opportunity that presented? It's just a natural thing. I'm mean, I've always yeah. been drawn to films and music. And yeah, one of my first cassette tapes was, I guess, well, the Annie soundtrack first, <laughs> but then uh, Danny Elfman, Beetlejuice. Yeah. I went to see that movie in the theater a million times just to listen to his soundtrack. And so for, you know, years later to end up using a little bit of his main title as my theme music for Filmscapes. And you got to interview him. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got to interview him on the phone. And yeah, how was he? Really exciting. Yeah, yeah. very nice. I was, you know, a little nervous and he's wonderful. So yeah, it was really, really thrilling to talk to him. Yeah, but, he's definitely like a hero to both of them I mean, to both of us. I love him. Mm hmm. That's so cool. So, like, well, when, when did you go to school for radio, or did this present itself? Like, I did. I mean, yeah? it was always okay. kind of a dream from when I was younger that I, you know I wanted to just own my own radio station and play a lot of cool music. And you know, you kind of get older and realize that's a pipe dream and too expensive. And discovered public radio. Well, then, now you have podcast. <laughs> yeah, right, right now, yeah, you know, now anybody you can, can. You could do it. Yeah. <laughs> She's in a band now. <laughs> yeah. Too bad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I mean, I just, uh, yeah, I did go to school for broadcast journalism and was kind of much the last class that got to actually cut reel to reel tape with a razor blade because oh, we're just all kind of phasing yeah. that out. So I was the last to get to edit things that way. That's crazy. Um, that is. I then got a cool. job at a classical music station kind of straight out of college. And then after a few years of that, started Filmscapes, the show, and then Filmscapes Intermission, which was a daily five minute little kind of nugget. You know, with a weekly theme, you know, music from Tim Burton films or Golden Cinema, you know, that kind of thing. Very it's weird cool. because we have we we met in 2010, and I remember hearing her Whoa. in like 2001. Yeah, like and, and seeing this show called Filmscape. I was like, "There's a movie music show on the That's radio," uh, and and so like we. Yeah, we have all these weird things. That... Yeah, it was years later that I was kind of pointed out. She never out heard that's... the Mints until 2009 at Live. Yeah, right. I yeah, I had never. I just missed she knew them the somehow. name. Yeah. She knew the name. I, I was aware of them and aware of who he was, and saw them play at the Norman um, Music Festival. Yeah, we had Lyman Festival that year. Yeah, and that was yeah bizarre because it's a huge crowd, and I ended up being just led into the photographer pit. So I've got pictures of Alan and not on stage, you know, like here's my future husband. You know, did not know that at the time. <laughs> Never but heard the music. Pretty before. cool that yeah. yeah. Then I was introduced to him, and I felt you know a little awkward. You know, a few months later, I guess March the next year, and it's like oh gosh, I need to listen to his music. And well, that's so I did, and it was great. So that was a relief. <laughs> that's amazing well, we, yeah it's always a relief because it's good you're like <laughs> yeah am i gonna have to fake it well this is great <laughs> yeah we met and we literally like went to like i had i i was temporarily living in oklahoma city here and had a little studio i was working with the band and uh i played her this like kind of rare more coney track called uh the sicilian clan and just to so you know 
It was, it was amazing. You know, yeah. I've never had anyone even know who Morricone was, much less play him for me. So, and then later that song ended up being our procession music for oh, our that's wedding. That's awesome. Nice. <laughs> that's so cool. Was well, <laughs> it? It's good. It's interesting. Both kind of like so coming into appreciation for music that is within film to like like the it, it, because music in film has a very specific kind of film being like so many facets of like sensorial perception right right? like music has a really enhancing property within it so like the Mm -hmm. type in the type of music you're going to hear within it it's going to be different than the music that can kind of hold off on its own you know not that you know a a song couldn't be put into a film but a lot of times scores are written in a different way and written to uh, emote different things so when you mm-hmm. listen to that by itself you're listening with like a kind of a visual thing in mind without seeing it you know so like it takes a very like orchestrated like kind of like perception of that and that's interesting that you guys both appreciate and like have found yourselves within that that's super rad <laughs> like yeah very cool oh yeah um i've um, a buddy of mine a good good friend he started making films and like and so now I'm I'm hearing all like music approached in a different way and like even film I'm like diving pretty pretty heavy in the history of film just hanging out you know when you hang out with friends that get into their things and like you it's the, that's the best thing about having friends into things is you learn about those things if they're the right type of friend or um yeah. thank you so like so you found like cuz that's a really specific niche to do on a radio show and like and you pitched that you came up with it Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just that's so cool. Said to our uh, program director at the time, I was like, "Well, why don't we have a movie music program?" And he said, "Well, why don't you do one?" <laughs> okay, it's cool. So, uh, just did it. That's awesome. That's all. I've been really getting into Mark Cousins. Are you hip to him? The he's a film no. critic, and like oh. uh, he did the story of film. It's like this fifteen docu fifteen hour documentary on like the history of film. Where uh, do you where cool. do you find that at? Um. I, I think it's on Hulu. Is it on streaming? Sure. Yeah, it's on okay, Hulu. Hulu. It's on Hulu? a canopy. Um, that's where I. What? It's just like a, through the libraries, and I'm sure. What's the guy's name again? So Mark, I'm gonna write this down. Mark Cousins. I've been right. going back and forth trying to talk with him, but he's making making films right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but cool. anywho, that's so that that's super rad, and uh, like because so much of like that like so much of f- how films expressed and how music is very similar. So like, hey, so you guys found this, the, found each other through this, and like, <laughs> found this love through uh, appreciation of music in that sense. So when it came mm-hmm. to For like sure. working on your grandmother's song, like, like how like I I mean one that had to be like a, a tear jerking process to like hear hear this song and be able to expand it, but like. Mm-hmm. And, but both having the kind of mind and like insight for that did like so like w- within that process for that song like I, I guess I want to say what what strengths did you not know each other had during actually doing it until working on this thing together like as far as like did you notice something Barb heard that you didn't or or Alan something you typically go for and she was like oh that was cool or I, I don't I don't you know what I mean cuz I've never hung out with like composers in this sense like uh-huh. I don't I like don't know how well, that... it's been a while since you know this has really been like 12 years since we've did that okay. song so I can't really specifically remember but I mean it was it was amazing yeah and very emotional and sentimental and and for yeah. me it was just getting to know her grandma through tapes because mm. you know she had, you know, I mean, and, and also we have digit, digitized like a bunch of like uh, she would she would uh, talk to Barb and her sister through tapes. Like she would say, hey, this is uh, hi, Barb and Amy. You yeah. know, this is, you know, yeah. what's how you guys been doing? I've been doing this, knowing this. So I got to know her, you know, you know, yeah, we have a few kind of cassette tape letters, you know, to my mom and other family yeah. members that she would just kind of sit down and chat. So to me, it was just this amazing. Like, I got to know this deceased, amazing woman, you know, um, that you know, just through tapes, you know, That's and beautiful. also getting to like you know digitize them, you know. Right. Yeah, that was a little nerve wracking because they're all you know kind of rickety old tapes. Like, yeah, Ooh, don't yeah, break. Yeah, but the yeah. <laughs> I wish we could play. I mean, we we, we yeah. probably could, but it would take a lot. Was it, um, so I, I had a notification that said in 10 minutes 
that's going to close this one out. So when that happens, I'm going to send you another email, Barb. Oh, and we'll okay. Con okay. Continue. Um, this great. is the other thing I hate about Zoom. Um, <laughs> yeah, one hour at a time? Yeah, well, it's, I don't even think it was. 30 um, minutes. Or 30 yeah, minutes. yeah. Um, anywho. Um, so kind of, okay. So like when it came time for double V, like, um, Alan, I know some of your music's been used in like, uh, Disney productions. Did a, a little bit. Yeah. I did a couple, I, I did a couple things for, for them. Um, good times. There was a, was it like, so two questions on that composing for that audience. Was that a big shift mentally, like in how, how to address, um, I guess what the material was, or was that just kind of common practice? And two was like, uh, there's a song that keeps coming up called Double V on some program. On oh, right, 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 right. Was we're, that aware, you guys? we're aware of that. Okay, no. okay. So that no, wasn't no, no, you no, guys. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, there was a, that was a real shocker. Yeah, I was like, yeah. It yeah. was called Double V that are not. And they, us. You, well, no, well, he's talking about that song, Double V, remember? It's like a little oh, vampire the, girl. It, yeah. Oh, the little, yeah, the vampires. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> we were actually kind of like, didn't know how to react and we still don't know how to react i mean because it's but you we know were, we were double leavers we actually <laughs> they around that before that time we we were asked to try out a theme song for a certain uh disney kids tv cartoon show about out setting outer space and stuff um and the 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 creator of the show was a fan a big Starlight Mints fan nice. and and uh, they wanted ours to be chosen but the big group ended up choosing going a different uh, way yeah so, so kind of near miss there we have a but. we have a, a relationship with Disney for sure <laughs> yeah I don't know if that's the that's the battle you want to go against the, I think they got a lot of money <laughs> for taking that name they, but yeah it only comes up when I would look up for like specific because yeah. I, I wanted to hear like what you're because I went through the whole catalog of a of Starlight Mints and like in Double V before before today, the kind of gauge yeah. you know the difference in how stuff has grown, and like was trying to find some of those uh, examples of stuff, but um, so so the guy was a fan of you guys, so he was asking you guys to do you, so that's easy, that's easier. Yes, yeah, she actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. she, she. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. So I mean, it, I you know, in hindsight, I think that we you know, if we would have been a little bit more cartoony we probably would have gotten a job like a little bit more like yeah you know <laughs> typical sort of you know but but I, I did a couple shorts uh for disney um one got published and the one got the plug got pulled which was an amazing the the second one i did um uh, i got paid so, Sick. <laughs> <Panned> out. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was like one of those things where it, something didn't work out uh, the yeah I, I don't know um, but uh, and there's been several other mint songs placed in TV shows right yeah right. Movies. we had a one in a BBC show called demons uh, we had a, the uh, theme, song. theme song for that's pretty that sweet. was kind of a big deal eyes of the night was the name of the song yeah it's interesting and, with uh, um, with the mints to kind of, I mean, let's see, I don't know how, when I'm going to drop. Um, oh, right, same right. Thing. Um, but it's interesting, like, the per, like the band itself sounds like, at first, very kind of like punk and put together in a way there's a lot of high energy, but that last record, there seems to be like a lot of like digital and like electronic instruments kind of added to it. And like, oh, I'm trying to think, like I think of the song Natural, it, yeah, it, it, like yeah. that. That one really stands the stands like as a different approach to like a band. Totally, and, and it was meant to be. Yeah, at the time I I I was writing that. I to me that song was going to be like a Gap commercial. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I don't know why. I was like, I'm a natural slack. So I was like thinking <laughs> it's going to be slacks, you know. And it, it was totally in my mind that it was going to be like this, like someone was going to pick it up or something. <laughs> uh it's, it's, it's so funny song. to talk about yeah i love that song i love, I love that song like i, I was I, I don't going through the mints i was like oh this is sweet this is cool and i'm like wait what that's cool so too. different like, yeah yeah but it's, it's a lot different than the other stuff yeah so like with the writing process with that did it kind of all was it a group effort or did it kind of fall on like did you kind of like lead 
whatever to the group and then they kind of expanded upon it um like that song i mean i pretty much did most of everything on that song okay honestly i mean a lot of that record i well in general though. in yeah, general yeah in general i mean like yeah a... yeah right yeah i mean we you know in general you wrote 90 percent of them yeah i i i yeah not it was that more of a yeah okay Yeah, not yeah to be it's like, hard uh, not to be like you are the guy who made that band. <laughs> not not to like put that out there, but just like to see kind of like the process of it because there's always somebody yeah or uh, two people that bring like a chunk to the group and they yeah hash it out. Like it was more uh, like you know with with that like with that type, type of song it was more like i'd say hey i'm working on this song band do you like it and they'd be like cool that sounds cool you know and yeah. then like do you have any ideas and it's like okay maybe there was an idea here or there you know um and you just kind of plug away at it you know Because it takes a it kind becomes of a spearhead to get the group to to do stuff. <laughs> At least that's what I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like, because uh, through the through line, through the mints, is like I've just, every song is really well, like every sound or every effect or every outside instrument that adds to a part or takes away or directs or builds off a chorus or makes a verse highlighted. I'm like, this is really, really well thought out. And that's a through line between the mints and double V. So like in it's Right. in it's with the mints with like each record that gets more precise and more precise. And I think like like uh, Amanda Dorbell um, being like from that first record and now like it's just like the perfect like yin and yang of where you were and where you're at. Like and Yeah, it's so for sure. polished and so interesting to see. So that's why I like I wanted to start off by asking with that by asking about that and like. Mm -hmm. The, and I think the highlight of what, I mean, like, with Mints and with what V does is, like, such a different, like, it's like a different approach to it. Um, did you guys... Well, I, I like the fact that you just went from Mints to V. Like, you, you, you came up with the new short version of Double V, which is cool. You're like, V. <laughs> Cut out the double. I never heard that. We never heard that before. So. That's cool. <laughs> but, um, but, like, with the... Like, there's definitely a stylistic thing that it resonates through, which is you, but also there's something that is uniquely different. And was that like, I imagine it's just the melding of you two together. Yeah, yeah influences. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, Barb, Barb and I have, we, you know, Different we communicate, I mean, way, I mean, better than I've ever communicated with anybody before. Yeah. Know, That's with, huge. With writing music. Yeah. So, I mean, And that, I mean, that's a great thing. Definitely, because a lot of most problems are that just that miscommunication. <laughs> it's like, I don't get what you Absolutely. mean. Or Yeah. I can't see what you're going for. So like, but Yeah. also, also was that like kind of like, so I know uh, like Jack the Rider, that was a concept, a concept record and kind of had like this, this vibe to it with like a time frame and everything. So with this newest record, T Treat Her Strangely, I can't, my words are getting tied now, uh, Treat Her Strangely, Strangely, blah. Um, was that like building off of what you did before, like enjoying some of those kind of like soundscapes you made? Because they, they kind of resonate within this record, but not 100%. It's like there's flavors of both. Yeah, I think it's a progression. I mean, as we learn more and keep building our, you know, sample libraries and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, we a lot of the songs were kind of handpicked. Um, we probably had like 30 songs Oh, yeah. or so to start, and then we sort of deduced, and then we built the last song. Uh, uh, Barb kind of wrote it mainly. I mean, we uh, The questions questions closed. closed. Um, we kind of built that from the ground up, um, w which the other songs were kind of, we already had the ideas, you know, down. Mid-explanation. I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> What um, were we talking another, about? well, Next question. yeah, let's next, chalk it up. You know, great answer. Yeah, That yeah, was, yeah, yeah. uh, <laughs> that was so compelling, Alan. <laughs> Wow. I've got a way with worms. Mm -hmm. uh, worms. Mm Um, but anywho, um, like one thing I noticed with this record, and especially with the guitar approach, was it really, it really made me think of like um, Pixies in a way, like Treat Her Strangely. -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a little... Sorry, keep, keep going with that. <laughs> There's a, in the first song, I think there's a little treat or the uh, what's the first song called? Uh, Treaters. When dawn comes tonight. Yeah, Don comes tonight. <laughs>
There's little pixies in that. Yeah, we're both pixies fans. That was one of the first shows we went to when took yeah. a little road trip. Out nice. There. With Kim. Kim was still playing. Nice. Where was yeah. that at? In Memphis at the Orpheum, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yep. We uh, it was cool because our hotel our hotel was just down the street, so we got to walk to the show. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> First time I've actually opened up for Frank. So, no way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In yeah. Portland. Yeah. Uh, and got to hang out with David, the drummer. Yeah. For P original Pixies or Pixies drummer David. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, doing like some like science thing he was like the middle band but it was he was doing these science experiments like you know he uh and so it was like us and then david doing the science experiments and then frank i think it was just frank black i don't think he was like catholics or anything like that it was just frank black solo with a band you know yeah didn't get to meet him though oh i was so. gonna say was he cool that that be he was he's intimidating man he's intimidating so like it, it, the backstage was, it was at a theater so the backstages were like separated so mm -hmm. we didn't get to mingle bummer <laughs> but yeah he but, seems like the the pixies they get they go on they're like hi and like that, that's and it. then boom yeah. yeah 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 except for when kim's in the band kim's like she talks yeah she's the talker she's like the like keeps everything flowing and like, Hey, how are you guys doing? You know, just very, <laughs> so it was really cool to see them. So cool. Yeah. I saw them right after when, uh, whoever replaced Kim, um, yeah. What's band. her name? Yeah. She did good. It was, it was yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. It, yeah. You know, but, um, but I did, she didn't, she didn't pipe up at all, you know, like, yeah. But yeah. That they kind of seem, I saw them the last time I saw them was at the Gore in Cleveland and like, I saw them like maybe two times before, like one at Riot Fest and one somewhere else. Oh, cool! And like they, uh, they, I guess they don't do encores, but the Agora was going nuts. And Eat Frank oh, Black, no. he, he came out. He's like, All right, "We're gonna do one more. We don't, we don't normally do this. Thank you guys." What did they do? They, they they did Into the White, and as they are doing mm -hmm. that, they were tearing down the lights, and they just had this giant. Like the crew was even like, "We don't do this. We're out." Like. They were tearing down. Like, yeah, they had one bright light. You know, it was wild. Um, but which they, I'm actually thinking, of what what song is that? Into the Light. Which album is that off of? Um, is that the last one, Trump Lamont or something, or, no, or is that a newer one? I might be getting the. Uh, it, or sorry, not Into the. I'm I'm mixing it up with X. It's um, is she weird? Is she white? Is oh right, 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 right. Off of Bossa uh, Nova. Yeah, uh -huh. yes, yeah. yes. And I was like, <laughs> that was the that was the last Pixies album I bought. Yeah. Bossa Nova. Yeah. Yeah, the last few have been good, but they're like they're different. They're different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like there's a couple times with the guitar on this record, I'm like that's very a uh, uh, Pixies X like approach to like just melody. I'm like that's so rad. So that's cool that that's that's one of the influences. Um, yeah, there's definitely an influence there. I, I like Joey. Yeah, yeah, he's got. <laughs> he's just going from like melodic to like. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely very distinctive. That there was that um that has ha has nothing to do with Joey, but I wish there was a documentary way back called It Might Get Loud that had Jimmy Page, Jack White, and The Edge yeah, from YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I always wish that Joey was in there too. You know? That would have been maybe a little yeah. I'm not the biggest U two fan, so maybe a little more interesting than the Edge. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. I, I would say so as well. Was, yeah, uh, the edge is like a lot different because he uses effects, you know. A lot of them. Whereas too. Jack, Jack and Jack and Jimmy are very similar, you know. Yeah, yeah. Jack like Jack's like making a guitar out of a, bob, a piece of wood and string at the beginning of that, you know. <laughs> like yeah, it's like I love Jack White. He's great. We, yeah. we 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 opened up for for uh the White Stripes before they broke. Yeah. And, uh, at, at the. Uh, What's the place in L.A.? I always forget the name. Troubadour. Troubadour. At the Troubadour. That's sick. Yeah, it was right before they broke because there, there was already, like, Bush was there. The band Bush was there to see <laughs> the White Stripes. And this is before they were on MTV and all yeah. that, you know, the, 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 the stuff. We were big fans, though, so we had been listening to them in the van. Did you get to and, uh, kick just, it with them? No, oh. I mean, uh, other members of the band did. I'm not, I'm not one to, like, usually, you know, Hey, I mean, if I like somebody like a band, I don't usually approach them. You know, I'm just kind of not. Don't meet your heroes. Not my DNA. Thing. Yeah. 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 
Well, it's yeah, I get that because like there's that thing you're like this influenced me so much and I get so much enjoyment out of what you do and if I meet you and you're like, eh, yeah, like oh, now everything's a lie and a bummer, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> there's a fine line, especially with it's interesting with like shows and stuff. People don't want to people don't want to be bothered. Like uh, with with the John Doe, like he was super he was super cool and but they were like all COVID-y. and you know what I mean. So now there's that whole thing too where they're like, yeah, we're gonna go hang out here. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I was like, cool, right? But yeah. I got it, you know what I mean? Because they were they're yeah masked up and trying to trying to be. Man, healthy. I wish this COVID thing would go away, but I know it's not. It's Same. just like it's such a bummer, you know. It's it, like, I mean, I miss my we we miss our friends, you know. We can't, I mean, it just sucks. Yeah. I mean, because it's really, I mean, it's still strong, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like another wave going on. It's, no, definitely. You know, like, sorry. The press isn't talking about it a lot, but because everyone's just kind of sick of it. But, I mean, I see on Facebook and I see friends all over the place getting it, you know? Right. And like, It's not as bad, but. Yeah, which is yeah, good. We, <clears> we don't know good. that, though. We have some friends with long COVID and. You know, they're saying that even if you get mild COVID, it's like yeah, it's affecting true. your immune system yeah. for the rest of your life. So, right. Have you had it yet? Yeah, I've got it. You did. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. It was, it was, it, it was, was pretty weird. gnarly. It just, it came out of nowhere. It was like, boom, by the way, what? Oh, knocked out. Was it pre-vaccine? Uh, yeah, it was like, I was scheduled to get, oh. I was scheduled to get the, yeah. the shot. And then like, uh, got it. it was like, okay, I'll go on Tuesday. And I like, got hit with it on Monday. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, no. I'm like, well, you I guess okay? I wait. Oh, How yeah, bad yeah. was it? It was, yeah. it, le- knock on wood, it was just like, um, it was just like being super, super sick and just, you can, the whole, the whole thing, you can smell, you can taste, yeah. but like, mm-hmm. I, it, it did pass and like everyone around my family and everyone got it and it was, it was pretty brutal. Oh, no. And like, sorry. Uh, wow. But it, it, you know, I don't know. So I, I got the vax after it and like, um, and so far, so good. Knock on, yeah. on wood to keep yeah. dodging. Because working in a school, it's like we had we did yeah. the mid shutdown, you know, and like, yeah, uh, it's just you never know. You never know. You just adjust as you as it happens. But you're right. Yeah, there there is a lot going on, and not a lot of people like talking about it, and probably just from the fatigue of of it because it's you know it's nonstop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. You're lucky you haven't gotten again from working with so many kids. I mean, that's <laughs> knock on wood. I mean, yeah, I'm going, <laughs> yeah, knock on lots of wood. But um, but for the most part, it's fine. They, you know, we wear masks and do the bit and like, um. So I don't. You I know. saw. Change the subject a little. I yeah. saw you rocking a twelve string guitar on something uh, online. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's a. I love. Sorry. I'm just a big. I don't own it, or we don't own a twelve string guitar. But I, I, just like one of my dreams is to have a twelve string acoustic guitar. And I was like, saw you rocking. I was like, damn, I wish I had one of those. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate. I really appreciate you guys looking into into the show a little bit and what I do. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Of Most people are like, hi guy, and I'm like, hi friends. <laughs> like hopefully, <laughs> but like no, um, no, we'd like to. Research and I've never been to Cleveland, so yeah, yeah. I need to come visit I, we'll you sometime. Set up a show and we'll make it happen. <laughs> What's the clubs in Cleveland? Um, is it a grog shop? Wait, grog was that would be Cleveland? good. Yeah, it's grog's Cleveland. okay. That's a little little club. That, that, that a lot of bands go through the grog, right? Yeah, grog, the Beachland. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else would be the code is a good one, the Winchester, as far as like clubs that. Are still yeah Winchester in. yeah yeah that's a cool one. I've only played there a couple times so yeah yeah I want to go there too. Let's go to Cleveland. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> all um, right. That's our ticket. We go to all the hard of rock and roll cities. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. But now that'd be cool if you got on a side note. If you're ever interested in doing stuff, drop me a line. I'll help you put together oh, a for bill sure, or something. Yeah. Um, but I kind of wanted to, to dive into like as far as like being like kind of both composed minds like a composer can like composer mindset i want to find the right way to say that composed mind sounds a little that sounds like a book <laughs> that sounds like a book of like healthy habits or something um yeah, love it. but but like uh do you guys have a songwriting practice that you do for yourself or a creative practice you do just like to keep yourself in that mode we're kind of always in that mode yeah i mean we're always 
jotting down lyric ideas or singing back and forth, you know, just improving about, you know, the dishes or whatever, you know. We also, I mean, we make it a habit to always record ideas, you know. Yeah. You have an idea, always, always record it. You know, it makes it makes for a big mess, but you know, at least you, you know can refer back to you it. You can refer back to it, yeah. For sure. Um I yeah, you know, doing that forever. So that's you know, that's Barb always says Alan has hard drives and hard drives of of ideas and I do, but it's not it, you know, it's a it's a it's a blessing and a curse because there's you know you have to sift through all that stuff to you know to find the bit to find the gem, you know. Yeah. But that's it's super because it's such a fleeting moment. If anything like with yeah. like with like recording or writing, it's like finding the, the beauty in the absurd that is yeah. momentary and like uh, and even if it's referring on it after past after it's past it's like but that's a certain perspective that only comes through th- sifting through all this like i was on to something here or or just even yeah. seeing images and being like that's really profound like and i it's, and i think i think i think when we met i was doing a lot of scoring i've been scoring some you know like little projects here and there and i was way into like the 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 sample libraries and stuff and i still am for that matter but i did a lot of writing just instrumental writing before we started double v mm-hmm. there's a lot a lot there as well um cinematic stuff you know which uh i do have a website that has some examples of that yeah you have some you need to update yeah just yeah i need to clips. update my 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 score stuff well, that's also got to be a really interesting because like that's a whole subsection within the like, yeah. the, the outlet of music that like you know it's the band thing's kind of not too far because it involves the public from the public so it's a little easier to understand like you put out the record you play here and you do a bunch of that through the states and then you listen to it here but so there's a clear like you put you put together the product you put together the song and you put it out like it's but when it comes to a composition like how to pitch it to like someone who needs yeah. that like yeah. it's like a, it seems yeah. like a whole it's, underground world yeah i don't know yeah it, it it is i guess i mean i'm not really a part of it i don't feel like but i would like to be you know i have no clue um, on how it yeah. is but i would imagine you guys get more more leeway in explaining that like so is it kind of like just composing pieces and like pitching them to people that are looking for things like when well, we this... have a music publisher. Oh, okay. who, uh, oh yeah. You're talking about like, yeah, like, out for us. like beyond placements. blue. We got last castaway is one of our songs in the beyond blue um, video game. Oh, cool. And that's a couple of years ago. And so, yeah, our publisher really is. Yeah. Great. They look out for us and let us know when there's possible opportunities for us to throw our hat in the yeah. ring. And we're kind of waiting to hear back about something right now that we have our fingers crossed about because yeah, placements are definitely one of the best ways to get the word out and make money <laughs> and make a yeah. living. Yeah. yeah. That's got like uh, music's hard enough. Like to, that's why I'm jumping into it with kids. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's hard just to do the, the outlet. So there's like, like, but it's cool with, with like, with like putting it into, into like film and like, I, I can't think of the right word for, uh, uh, when you put it into a film, ah, what's it, the music? Scoring? Becomes, not placement. scoring. Placement. Film ah! Soundtrack. Soundtrack, uh, mm-hmm. when uh, like with, uh, it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. But basically, all of that, you know, it's a whole nother revenue of like being able to make money with music and not have to show up and set up and play and like keep everything. Oh yeah, going. for sure. Yeah, because we we mm-hmm. we we are just now starting to think about playing live. I mean, yeah, literally, we've never played live the two of us. Yeah. To, uh, no, yeah. So been a studio band prior to now but we recruited a couple of members a few months ago and have been practicing okay. when we can but it's the heat's been pretty the bad. heat has like yeah kind of called it off and just you know schedule conflicts and then just you know being uncertain about the willingness of us to be out there and play right now anyway right. so we're shooting for fall and we'll just see how things are looking COVID and stuff yeah, yeah. well that'd be a good so like, because of how like just orchestrated and how many different things you guys have going on in the record which like like I don't know. I think the record should be very. There should be a lot going on. It should seem like every attention to detail was was a, a noted for and like 
like live it should seem a little bit more realistic you know i don't know yeah mm -hmm. for sure yeah it, and it will be you know um i mean when when the men's you know were happening we we also you know we had a lot of strings and and orche orchestral things going on um but we were only a five piece um and so we would you know we have backing tracks and stuff like that with some of the string parts and brass parts uh, that we couldn't pull off you know and then we'll try to you know some of the parts we'll try to try to actually pull off on a keyboard or on the cello i play a little cello so um yeah it should be fun once we once we once we get to that point the double v <laughs> what oh that's one one thing i wanted to ask about so when i hear double v <laughs> right i think of a it makes me think of the letter w but it right, really looks right. like two v's is that why you want right to right double right v? is that it like, oh just best and best double v just oh kind of a that makes sense cutesy Got thing it. that it was Got originally it. just gonna be like a production company name and then when we kind of evolved into let's go ahead and be a band at the time there weren't so many other double v entities out there Except for yeah, there's a few more now <laughs> <laughs> but we're the only one lowercase d big v so that's how we Got differentiate it. ourselves or try to yeah well that it, makes it's, it's a lot of trouble to uh having it the lowercase d yeah, <laughs> yeah. especially a lot of people right. don't get it right yeah mm -hmm. it's <laughs> it's it's the worst that that little thing matters so much you know what i mean because like you're saying most yeah. people are like well yeah. i capitalized the title um yeah. uh -huh. and like because there's there's only so many names in the world for everything like it just even yeah. when you look at the meaning of a symbol one symbol can have nine different meanings from yeah. a bunch of different cultures like mm -hmm. you're supposed to come up with something completely original to be a thing like there's always going to be underscore Some, yeah or <laughs> yeah there's always going to be someone that's especially now in the age where everyone's putting their stuff on the internet some yeah. someone's like my name is Va vince v vaughn and like i don't know like <laughs> double v dog double v like yeah yeah, yeah. someone's someone somewhere is had you know i mean like but yeah. uh, it's interesting, like, so it, it puts that importance on the little things like that, like the lowercase d. Like, with my band, it's lower, it's C dash level. So I always have to put the dash because people like to write S E A. I'm like, that's a band with someone from the Almond Brothers. <laughs> that's not <laughs> us. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you can relate. Yeah. yeah. No, no yes. matter what your band name is, you, you, it's like, I've always said, like, it's what, you know, it's, you know, there's great bands with, the horrible band names i'm not yeah. gonna name you yeah. know, these bands but i mean it's like it's just a name you yeah. know yeah, and yeah. people will associate the music if they like the music and they'll just get over the name you know oh for sure yeah well, i mean <laughs> yeah but yeah, that, that, with anything like if it's if you're doing if what you're doing is good eventually it will get caught on to yeah yeah and like I think with this newest record, it's really, really good. And I think, like, it's oh, kind of the best of, like, what the Mints was building up to and, like, what you guys offer together as a group and a team. And, like, um, so with that, so the plan is to do some live stuff coming out. Like, do you guys have any, like, I guess, with going into radio, what, like, music skills panned into making that job easy? Like, timing and, like cadence did they you find like skills like that like helped present convey yourself through the radio or did those skills through con like being on radio help with music probably a little bit of both ways yeah. i mean i originally i never wanted to actually be on the radio i yeah. just wanted to own a station you know and <laughs> make the playlists yeah. and that kind of thing and then it ended up that for the first few years i was doing morning newscasts and that kind of thing and then <clears throat> developing the show but yeah as far as cadence and and whatever i mean i don't know just kind of comes naturally i guess okay interesting you can oh, tell by the way she speaks yeah yeah no definitely um <laughs> but the, you know i mean like because like there i'd imagine there's an element of timing within certain things and being on on point when things are about the cue in and when you have to drop things and when to cut into that i'd imagine the elements of music kind of help with that but i don't know if you got if you grew up with it it's just everything you know <laughs> but anyway, right yeah but anyway i guys i really appreciate you taking your time and helping me get through this this mess of a zoom um to make this oh, happen you're great and um we I'm, 
Sorry, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, and I look forward to uh, with it sucks with Zoom. I have, I feel like I have to stop immediately because like there's already these weird timing things. Um. Right. <laughs> no, we really appreciate your interest and yeah, and you're sure. awesome, and that's we just think you're a really really great guy, and can't wait to actually meet you. Likewise, likewise. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate I appreciate the kind words. <laughs>